Hey, thanks for joining me here in my basement today. I am going to talk some more on faith. I have this devotional here on faith, and um, it kind of makes you have to dig really deep on your belief on faith and why is faith so important. So I'm going to pray real quick, and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, I ask that you help me today bring your word to life, that anyone that is listening under the sound of my voice, that you open their ears, open their eyes, that they may hear and see the word of God and see how it pertains to their life. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, thanks for joining me. I am going to talk, this is knowing who you are. <coughs> so do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, 1. So faith is allowing God to define who you are, not the world, not family, friend, or enemy. And who does God say you are? You are his own treasured possession. We're going to go to 1 Peter 2, 9. And it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So if you're saved, if you're a Christian... He's called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You are chosen by him. All right. His lavishly loved child. 1 John 3, 1. 1 John. <coughs> All right. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God, Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So the thing is that I see in this, we are children of God. Every single person on this earth is a child of God. So just like our own families we have that we're raising. So we have a child, say, that isn't living how you raise them. They're what we would call a prodigal child. We still love them. We still care for them. We still want them to come home, right? God's the same way. And then you have the child who is exactly how you imagined their world to be. You raise them up, they they grow up, they love God with everything, they worship God, they have faith in God, they <coughs> show the love of God. So our own families are exactly what the world is. We're not to hate the people that hate us, because we're living right with God, all of the people on this planet, this earth, are children of God. So we're to love each and every one. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Not everybody gets to go to heaven because not everybody accepts that he is their father and that he is the God of the universe and that he wants nothing but the best for us, right? So... We're children of God, just like we have our own children. God has all of us, and we are to love him. We're to have faith in him that he has the best in mind for us, the best in store for us, life and life abundantly, John 10.10. 10. So he lavishly loves us, right? <coughs> he knows every hair on your head and every tear that you cry. 
So we're going to go to two separate scriptures here. Luke 12, 7. Matthew, Mark, Luke 12, 7. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more valuable than any sparrows. So there's scripture in here too that why do you worry about the clothes that you wear, where you're going to lay your head? God has given um, the birds of the air a place to nest and he feeds them, right? He's taught them how to take care of themselves. So how much more is he going to take care of us if we believe him and that we believe in him and on him? He wants the very best for us. So if your life is right now not looking how you think it should, <clears throat> my number one question is, is are you looking at, oh, woe is me and being self-centered? And every, in every conversation, everything you say and do, is it me, 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 me? I, 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 I. What has, why is God not doing this for me? Why, why, why? I'm going to tell you you're wrong. You have to take the focus off of you and put it on Christ. And as you start to focus on Christ and what he has done for you, he died on the cross for us, for you. And if we will look to that and go, you loved me so much that you died on the cross for me. God loves us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross so that we could live, not just in heaven eternally after, but to live on earth, heaven on earth. Give us our daily bread, which is the word of God. We are to read the word of God every day. We are to build up our faith by reading the word. Not watching TikTok videos, scrolling through, scrolling through YouTube shorts, Facebook shorts, <coughs> the reels on Facebook, the reels on Instagram. That's not where our meat of the word comes from. We're wasting our time. We're wasting our days. God has given each and every one of us a call. And if you don't know what it is, then get into your word instead of, what is it? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me what I'm supposed to do. God will tell you what to do. But you have to seek him. He, you will find him. Knock and he'll open the door. Ask and he'll give you answers. But you've got to go hunting, seeking and finding him in the word of God. Praying to God. Not just praying, 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 praying. And praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And praying. Get in your word and he's going to start giving you the answers. Build up your faith by reading the word, right? All right, so our next scripture was Psalms 56, 8. Because he knows every hair on our head. Psalms. fifty-six eight. You number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? So then it kind of goes on. When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? <coughs> so if you're, oh, my life is awful. My life stinks like nothing's going right. Poor pity me, right? I've been there. I'm not innocent of anything that I speak on because I've been there. I wrote a book <laughs> because God brought me out of there. Hope in the Lost. You can find it on Amazon. It is all about getting out of that 
Trials are happening to me. Where are you, God? This is finding God in the process of the trials, the struggles, the death of family members, of miscarriages, of church hurt. This is, stop looking at yourself. Look to God. Find him. And this is so raw, so real. Like, I give you my life story. It's a very easy read, though. It's one that pretty much everybody that has come to me about reading this book, they've read it in a day. They've read it in a couple hours. They can't put it down. And I'm not bragging. I This is... This is God-inspired. I wrote this completely in about two weeks. Like, I sat down in my basement for five hours at a time. And time would just get away from me. I'd look down, and it's like, oh, my gosh, I need to take a break. It's been five hours. I need to, to back away from this, come back another day. <coughs> it was complete in about two weeks. Then going through and fine-tuning the grammar of it all took the longest. And, you know, getting feedback from my mom and my, my husband on it. Um, it is truly inspired by God telling my testimony of losing hope and losing faith in God. And that God is a good, good father. Like, I knew he was good, but not for me. <clears throat> I must have done something wrong. Get out of yourself. Quit. Quit thinking about yourself and start thinking about how can I help somebody else? God, what is it that I can do that's going to minister to somebody else? Which became a book, which is becoming these YouTube videos. He has told me, speak. I've given you words. I've given you, I haven't given you the struggles. I've gotten you through the struggles. I've given you life. I've given you life more abundantly. Now go speak to my people and bring them out of the pit that they're wallowing in. He wants to rescue you. He wants to bring you out and give you a life worth living. But you can't pick up off of somebody, piggyback off of me. I'm here to encourage you to get into your word. Get into this. Get into your Bible. Find it. Read it. It's not the same as getting on your phone and scrolling through and reading the word that way. Now, there is audio. If you have a hard time with reading, you can listen. But still get the paper book and go through it as the audio is speaking. But it's, it's better if you get your hands on the written word. Read it. Read it out loud so that your spirit and your soul hear the words of the of the gospel you've got to get into the word to build your strength to build your faith to come out of that pit get into the word all right <coughs> so we've already read he knows every hair he knows how many can you count how many hairs you have on your head i can't like they're so fine. They're so much. I, I couldn't count. He knows every hair. He's numbered them. He knows every tear. He catches your tears. He cares so much for you that he catches your tears in his jar, in his bottle. Each and every one of us. That's a, millions of people that he knows. Each and every one of us. And the tears that we cry. And he brings people across our path to help us, to pull us out of that pit, to get us to quit thinking about what went wrong and go, what can I do now to change my life? He writes your name on the palm of his hand. We don't even do that. Like there are people who put tattoos of their children's names on their body. God is Put every person's name on the palm of his hand. Isaiah 49, 16. <coughs> 49, 
49, 16. Isaiah 49, 16. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. So let's see what some of this says. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. So, in this book, when it talks about, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? This book is so raw and so real because I talk about the pain and the struggle that I went through because I had two children that died in my womb. One was a boy and one was a girl. I had a miscarriages nine months apart. I was just shy of 20 weeks. I should have been safe. I should have been protected from that. I was past that first trimester, into the second trimester. I still have not forgotten the son of my womb, the daughter of my womb that I lost. They're in heaven now. One day I'll see them. But the pain is still there. It's still real. But it's, what do I choose to do with that? Do I choose to wallow? Or do I choose to write about it and set other people free? So you can be free from the pain, the loss of people in your lives during the last, Two years, so the year 2021, we lost two people in our lives. My father and my mother-in-law. Very special people. They're in my book. It talks all about it. it. talks about the pain, the struggle, what what all was going on in that moment. It was tough. But I know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So my needs are to be joy again, to have hope again, to have faith again. Those are my needs, right? And each of us have something totally different that we're dealing with. Be it a financial miracle, be it a miracle in your marriage. Talk about marriage struggles in there. Because of the pain of my, my miscarriages, it started affecting my marriage. Each one of us go through so many different things. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to lay down and let the devil kill, steal, and destroy us? Are we going to have life and life abundantly the way God intended? Right? God knows you and he calls you mine. He calls you by name. Your name, if you have accepted Christ, is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. And all the sins that you've had have been wiped away. And he says, cast all of your cares upon me, for I care for you. So why worry? Why sit and, and have all these worries and concerns and cares of everything that's going on? Cast them to God. He wants to restore you. He wants to set you free. He wants all of that. Give it to him. What does it do to you except bring you further down and, oh, what was me? And I can't live this life anymore. I can't do this. Well, I can't do this life without Christ, without my heavenly father. I can't live this life without them. And I have no idea how people get through life without him because he has gotten me through so much. He's brought me out. And now I pray that as I'm talking to you, that he will be bringing you out. He will give you strength, give you that life and that power that's in him. Because I have the life of God in me. I've got the nature of God in me. I've got the power of God in me 
to live this life to the fullest because God has called me to live heaven on earth, not waiting to die to get to heaven. He wants heaven on earth, not hell on earth. He wants heaven on earth. And if you're living hell on earth, you need to get right with God. You need to ask for his help. Ask for him to help you. Not post on social media all the time when something's going wrong. I'm guilty. I've done it. I've blessed it on Facebook many years ago. All the stuff. God is for us. So who can be against us? He is for you. So who can be against you? When something bad comes, Satan, I rebuke you. Get away from me. You are not going to enter into my day. Chaos, go. Confusion, go. Peace, joy, and love fill me. Fill my home right now in the name of Jesus. <coughs> what are you confessing? Are you confessing the life and the nature and the power of God, the love of God into your home and into your life? Are you confessing destruction, defeat, hatred, anger? Which one is it? It's your choice. You have a choice today of what you speak out of your life, right? Are you going to speak death and destruction and anger and hopelessness? Or are you going to speak faith, hope, joy, love, kindness, right? So why is it so important to you and your faith to allow God to define you, who you are, rather than the world or anyone in it? So are you allowing God and his word to define you and to define how your day is going to go? You can get up every single day and if you have that, oh, I just don't want to get up today. Don't get up out of bed right then. You you sit and go, God, ask right now. Can you give me the strength to get through this day? Because I got the life of God in me. I got the life of God in me. I've got his life, his nature, and his ability. I've got the life of God in me. Like you can be pulling Pull on him because you've got the life of God in you. And if you'll start just speaking that, I've got the life of God in me. I've got the nature of God in me. I've got the power of God in me. You're going to help me get through this day today, Father. If that's all you can utter, every time something demonic comes, something negative comes at you, you turn around and speak to that. Speak to that mountain and it'll be removed. You say, I've got the life of God in me. I've got the nature of God in me. I've got the power of God in me. And today is going to be a great day because God lives in me, right? So if you start speaking life, then you'll put your feet on the ground running saying, I've got this. Today is going to be a good day because Christ is in me. He is the hope of my calling. But you have to speak it into existence because life and death is in the power of the tongue. The Bible tells us that. So you can speak life into your life or death into your life. Which one would you rather have? I would rather have life in me where I'm living joyful and having peace and love flow around me than chaos and destruction and death. Yeah, Things happen to us because the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I can remember my dad talking about how he would pray for me because the enemy was constantly telling him I was going to die. And so he would pray against it, that Satan was not going to take me out. And let me tell you, there's so many times <clears throat> that spiritually I could be dead, physically I could be dead, should be dead. But I'm not because the prayers of my father were constantly over me praying that I, that I not lose my life before God 
has fulfilled my call. God's not done with me yet. I cannot die right now. God is not done with me yet. Is God done with you? I don't think so. But are you going to let the devil destroy you and destroy your life and destroy your children? Or are you going to speak life into your situation and watch God turn it around? Because he will do it for you. You have to have faith. And if you need more faith and you need to learn about faith, then go to Keith Moore Faith um, School, I think is what it's called. <coughs> if you go to YouTube, excuse me, <coughs> go to YouTube, look up Keith Moore Faith School. There are hundreds of hundreds of messages start in one and it's every day of the week. I believe Monday through Friday. It's Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday. So he either has four or five teachings a week. And this started way back. So he's got hundreds and it starts with what is faith? Then why faith? Then how do we get it? How do we stand on it? Like it's so deep. Go on, get into your word. I mean, it digs you into the word and it breaks it down. But you have to believe that God wants you to live holy, to live righteous, to live abundantly. He has a calling for you, but you can't find it by somebody else telling you what it is. You've got to dig into the word, and then start asking God, what is it? Talk to me. Give me ideas, business ideas, whatever it is. Help me to, to get through my work day. Help me to, to minister to those around me. Ask him. He'll start telling you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and he will answer you. Be blessed. Have an awesome weekend. And I will see you later. Love you all. Blessings.